I think they are a threat. Uh, I think they're as dangerous, as fanatical, uh, as, uh, as terrorist, as Al-Qaeda was. And they have a large number of foreign fighters uh, with foreign passports that make them particularly, uh, particularly dangerous to the safety of this country. Well, he was once Obama's defense secretary, and now Leon Panetta has broken his silence on ISIS and the president's mishandling of it. It was a fairly scathing interview, Panetta revealing that Obama ignored all of his inner circle, all of the heavy hitters, General Petraeus, Dempsey, Hillary Clinton, all warned Obama not to pull out of Iraq, all warned him to arm Syrian rebels. He didn't. And now ISIS is all of our problem. Let's bring in Joel Pollack to talk about this and a number of other things. Good to have you, sir. Good to be with you. So 60 Minutes, um, I watched it in anticipation of this um, interview. It pained them. It must have absolutely pained them to have to be critical of the president because they really have given him such a free li uh, ride uh, in the, you know, during his uh, presidency. But nonetheless, they, they exposed the mishandling of the global threat ISIS. Well, not everyone who's speaking out against the Obama administration's foreign policies has the same motives. And with Leon Panetta, you can never really be sure whether he is speaking for himself or speaking for the Clintons. Remember, he's largely a Clinton operative. He was chief of staff in the Clinton White House. He came to Obama as an experienced hand to run the CIA and then the Defense Department. Even though he had very little expertise in mm -hmm. either of those areas, he was just kind of a political heavy hitter who knew how to get the job done in Washington. So he is speaking out against President Obama's indecision, and the implication is that Hillary Clinton, then Secretary of State at the time, was being overruled. Not that she was running a bad foreign policy, not that she was bad at her job or had the wrong ideas. We can forget all about that stuff with the Russian reset and her own campaign against the war in Iraq and so forth. She was the responsible one. Obama was the one who went against the better advice of his cabinet. And there you are, Clinton 2016. I mean, essentially, that's yeah. what this amounts to. So I think we have to look at that very carefully. But it is noteworthy that so many Obama administration appointees have now spoken out about his foreign policy, about his putting military objectives behind political objectives. And we've seen that with Bob Gates. We've seen that with Leon Panetta. These are very serious uh, senior people in the Obama administration speaking out. Yeah, look, it questions, you know, who is he getting his advice from? Uh, Valerie Jarrett, who, I mean, behind the scenes, uh, calls all the shots. But it's interesting, you, you know, you ignore all these voices because you want to think about it, but it just floors me as to, to who he is being advised by because whoever that is is doing a very bad job of it. But now, you know, the King of Jordan had some very interesting comments saying this could have completely been avoided and that ISIS is a very, very real threat and something that we should not be ignoring. You know, now they're threatening all of the West. Can, you know, Canadians are now being threatened with beheadings and that we'll never uh, sleep at night in peace because they're coming for us. And so do you get the sense because of these ominous threats that it will force Obama to change his well, lack there of strategy? I don't think so. If you look very closely at the statements of the White House in recent days, they've spoken about a long-term strategy for dealing with ISIS. That's not a commitment to the long war against terror that George Bush was talking about. This is a, an effective handing off of the problem to whoever occupies the White House next. Obama does not want to be blamed for this. He does not want to be held responsible when it is not cleared up by the end of his administration. He basically wants to sit on this until the next person takes over, and he's casting that as a sort of responsible policy. I don't think that Obama will do what's necessary. I don't think he wants to do what's necessary. Occasionally, he does the minimum that is adequate to shift the news cycle. But if you read today's Wall Street Journal, for example, when you uh, see the problems that the Peshmerga from mm -hmm. Kurdistan are having, they say the Americans need to do more. And they're being refashioned from a guerrilla army into one that can hold a long line against ISIS. But there's no sufficient military commitment by the Obama administration other than these very limited airstrikes. So you're seeing a very limited commitment by the Obama administration, even to its own strategy. Remember what Panetta was talking about were campaign promises Obama made in 2008. Obama said he was going to leave a residual force in Iraq. He said in 2012 he had a red line on Syria. Yeah. So all of these things are promises Obama made and broke. I don't think he's going to commit to his own strategy on ISIS any more than he has on any of his other policies.
Yeah, but it seems that Democrats don't want anything to do with him as far as campaigning now. They want his wife, Michelle Obama, uh, to, to join them on, on, on the trail. But is he so toxic now? And is it the ISIS or the foreign policy or is it Medicare? What is it that makes him so, I mean, the obvious makes him so toxic. But what is it about Obama that they just want nothing to do with him? So you have to think about a midterm election, and most elections are simply about turning out your base and then hoping to win the middle. Midterm elections are particularly about turning out the base. The fact that Democrats don't want to be seen with Obama is reflective of two things. First of all, that they're running in a lot of red states, that is, states that voted for Mitt Romney. This is in the Senate elections, so having Obama there doesn't really help Democrats who are trying to hold on to their seats. But secondly, why don't they want Obama in congressional districts? Why don't they want Obama in races where he could shore up the base in blue states, for example? And that tells you he's lost touch with his base. They've lost confidence in his leadership. And I think that really began with Obamacare and its failed launch in mm -hmm. October 2013. People were very psyched up about Ted Cruz's government shutdown. They felt that Obama had the upper hand going into October last year, this time last year. Everyone was talking about the Republicans being on the ropes. And then Obama launched and it completely crashed. And Obamacare failed to deliver its promises. People had to give up their health plans. They lost their insurance. They had to change their doctors. And Obama had to come out and say, listen, I'm sorry that people were misled. You can blame me for it. Well, after that, the members of Congress and, and the Senate who put their reputations on the line saying people could keep their doctors because they'd been told that by the White House do not want and, and have not wanted Obama back in their district to be reminded of the broken promises of Obamacare. And it just kept rolling on from there. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next couple of weeks uh, with that and how the vote uh, turns out. Uh